Okay, so here we are in Jeff's shed. It's actually his workshop rather than a shed. It's a decent size. But he's also got a shed as well, a little wooden shed, a little shack that lives next door. So let's go and see what's in there. So we'll come out the door, over the path, into his little shed. And apart from some garden stuff, um, as you might imagine, it's full of motorcycle parts. And in particular, on his shelf at the moment, and even on the floor, it's full of cranks, as you can see. But these aren't Z cranks, these aren't inline four cranks, these are twin cranks. And they're for a different project, which I've already briefly mentioned in another video. And that project is his old CB350 supercharged bike, which is the first drag bike that Jeff ever built back in the 80s which recently was found again as a barn find, rusty, never used for decades, which of course he had to buy back, uh, which he has done so. Of course, it's now in a thousand pieces. A lot of work's been done. Uh, the frame's been cut and short and changed. Wheels have been changed, superchargers have been changed, but obviously there's other projects that come with a high priority. So right now it's just waiting for more time and money to be thrown at it. And all those cranks are for this particular engine. It's a, based on a Honda CB350 from the 60s. Uh, that was the engine that was in his drag bike back in the day, back in the 80s. And it ran on nitro. And as you can see, it was supercharged, although this is a different supercharger. He made a start on rebuilding this thing. He's got a new blower on it, a new drive side case. Made a start on the manifold to connect the blower to the head. And it's even got stronger bearings down here. These, these are doubled up and lots of the small little jobs here and there. Obviously you need spares for a drag bike, so he's got plenty of those. Um, the pistons are a, bit, are a bit of an issue because he wants to get it out to about 500cc. Um, we were given some old GPZ 752 volt pistons from a nice man in uh, Downing Crew who works for Bentley. So they may come in handy or we may end up changing it. We're not sure yet, but Obviously that's something for another day, <clears throat> since... Uh, 330 Honda. Yeah, 330 Honda, 400, 500. There is even a suspicion that we may end up making our own barrels, casting them to, to make some stronger barrels, but that, again, that's something for another day. And whether it'll ever happen, I don't know. And then last year, out of the blue, you were ordering, you bought some bits on eBay. I was going to rebuild them. Yeah, you were going to build a replica of what you originally had. I remember you were saving well, up some bits and bobs. The guy the bits off had my old bike. Turns out your old bike. So you went off. And bought it. <laughs> and bought it back. So he'd had it for quite a long time, hadn't he? And he changed it around a little bit. He'd... He only had a standard 250 engine in it. And I don't yeah. think he did. Yeah. I don't think he ran. Very much. Maybe some. Well, it, well, well, the blower came from a Second World War plane, didn't it? That yeah. Marshall he Wade. Only, he was only on methanol where yeah. I was running nitro. nitro. Methane. Yeah. So it came back here one Saturday. I turned up on a Saturday afternoon thinking, what the hell's that? And by the end of that day, it was in a thousand pieces. It was all taken apart. Yes. Yes, um, you, you couldn't resist. And in fact, I'll have a little break here because I've got some photographs of the bike when it came in. I mean, there is a little video, a shaky video that I took at the time. But um, I've got some photographs which just show it clearly and also shows it within minutes of you <laughs> getting your hands on it. In a distressed state. Being in... Oh, no, that was me. That was you. <laughs> in a distressed state. And the bike, the state it was in. Um, yeah, so we'll just show those now and so folks get an idea of what we're talking about. So here it goes. And now we're back again, still drinking tea. And since then, you've made a hell of a lot of change to it, haven't you? You took the engine out, you changed the supercharger, you sold off the rear Astrolite. Astrolite. Did a lot of work on that old Suzuki, not old, but a newish Suzuki, Suzuki rear wheel. I think it's a TL1000. Yeah, it? yeah. Its um, bearings uh, collapsed or something, did, didn't it? And, uh, a you... bearing collapsed. I've had a hub, machine, <laughs> machined a hub and yeah. had it welded. Well did, yeah. Machined yeah, up. and that looked really nice when you've done it all in gold. And again, we'll have a little break here and we'll see some photographs of that wheel being, well, reborn or recycled or whatever. And it looks pretty cool, I think. So here it is. Mm -hmm. 
And then I do remember you saying that you thought the frame had been modified over the years because it felt like it was a bit of a longer stretch and... I'd, I'd made it that long and... Yeah, now I reckon... Well, we've gone the, shorter. Yeah, now. well, the to answer is that you're not 21 anymore. 23. 23 anymore. Um, was it 24? 23, so, 24. sure enough, <laughs> next time I came to visit you, that frame was in three or four parts. It's, you'd, you'd actually chopped it up. And to be fair, it looks better now. You've, you've reduced the took headstock. Two inches. Took off two the inches out the length of it. Yeah. And again, we'll stop there for a quick photograph of the bike. Sawn open <laughs> and, and covered in clamps and God knows what else. So here it is. And here we are again. And then it got welded back together again. Oh, and you also, I think, widened the rear end, didn't you, to take that wider wheel? Whilst it was cut in half, I took the opportunity to add, I think it was about another three quarters of an inch. Yeah, yeah, and just to take that slightly wider wheel. 20 mil -ish. Yeah, yeah. Now, other changes are it used to run points ignition, and you're going to run it with a magneto, magneto. I think. Magneto. Yeah. It had, when it came in, a really rusty, horrible tank that sat high on the top tube, and that's, that's going to go, isn't it? And you're going to make something that will sit I inside can make the. Tank. There was one that was originally in it that sat in the frame, but yeah. it's long, long disappeared gone. from other long people gone. have had it. Uh, it had an air shift on it, which you don't like using, so that's going to go. And it had a rev counter from the original bike from about 1965 that you don't like either, so that's going to go. Um, and right now it's only a million bits because there's, there's other things to be working on. Yes. Uh, the frame's been blasted and you've got it with a quick coat of undercoat. Primer. Primer. And it's yeah. now sitting probably above our heads in the loft. As we speak. As we speak. It's up there waiting for us to, or waiting for you to get around to doing something with it. Um, so the Honda then, that's going to be... A wee while before we see that one in Jeff's shed again. Plus getting back on the drag strip doing stuff, I will increase your chances of um, what? getting hold of nitromethane. Which oh, that's no problem. You have to, oh, that's no problem. I've seen it online. Things and you, that, just, yeah. you just apply yeah. with the government. Make sure you're not a terrorist and, uh, <laughs> and blowing up the local, I don't know, chip shop or something. And, well, some people and you'll be fine. That. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Right, OK. This is going on quite a long time now, so we'll stop there. We'll have another cup of tea and then we'll look at another little project that you've been working on in the last few weeks. Okay. Cheers. Done.